Let's talk about the size of your rhizosphere, Scotty. No, really, root zone. Your root zone, your root ball, yeah. container size is what a lot of people say. Um, as far as, hey, you don't want to have to be chasing after watering like crazy, or maybe you do. Cyclical watering can be very advantageous. I had a great question off dudegrows.com. So let's start the grow show. Grambo, what's up? How you be, Scotty? Let's hey. Do this. hey, dude, is bigger always better? Grambo, mm. is bigger better? Huh? I mean, not in my world. <laughs> Uh, you think in container size, dude? Do you think better, bigger is always better? Not at all. Not at all. I do want to ask if this has happened to any of you all out there. For me, I just looked over at my tray with my lighters and my bowls. And do you ever have the great lighter migration when you have no lighters? And then all of a sudden, you have all the lighters. <laughs> like, no. Like no lighters the other day. So I will tell you something that bums me out. I'm too much of a stoner for vape pens. Mm -hmm. I just lose them. And then one day I hope I find them in a giant pile, like uh, in like the back. What is it? Like the back pocket of the car seat or maybe under the floorboard. Those are usually good, <laughs> good places. To hide. Dude, my, my couch cushions have hundreds of dollars worth of cannabis in it. Yeah, I feel. Yeah. I feel like I get on my soapbox and I'm like angry dad, where's all my lighters? And then like eventually, you know, everybody in my house smokes, but my daughter, she's young, she's in eighth grade. Um, and I'm just like, yeah, just, and then when mother-in-law's in, then we all go to secret areas of the house to smoke. So stuff starts <laughs> popping up in weird areas. Anyway, we got all the lighters. We got some weed. Scotty's got a J. Let's get into this, man. Let's get into it. First off, um, what size container is the best choice? There is no right answer there. There is no just best choice. It's your application. There you go. The best choice for application is the right answer. How big is your grow? How long do you want to veg? Um, that, that kind of stuff. Some plants like to be big. Some plants just like to grow and, and never get trimmed whatsoever. That just grow that giant central cola. It really does depend on the of course, plant structure. If you're a rule, a rule follower, plant count can be a consideration. You know, if they're like, look, you can only grow four in Canada. You can only grow four plants and like, so it depends if I was doing that. Let's just start with that up in Canada. It's legal to grow four plants federally. So if I'm going to grow four plants uh, and I have the space, I'm going to go with probably seven gallons. Typically I would go with three or fives. Um, but man, you don't, you, you want to take advantage of that space. You want to make sure your roots fill it out. Soil isn't media, isn't cheap. You know, you don't want to uh, like not take advantage of that. And then also you don't want to have to be watering like crazy, Go ahead. You also want a dense root mass, though. You don't want some sparse root mass. Think about when you get a tomato plant from Home Depot in a one or a three gallon. When you pull it out, it doesn't all fall apart. And there's techniques for that, too, to develop a dense root mass. We should talk about those. Why don't we see what Thundar's up to, man? Thundar, Thundar. the barbarian. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Guys, over on dudegrows.com, we go hang out and we pick out some real questions. Anybody can get questions up there. Use invite code strain dependence, spelled correctly, stoners. <laughs> That's got uh, a, a uh, D in it. <laughs> <laughs> Grandpa, I don't know how lonely it's spelled either, so don't worry about it. Oh, I mean, I, I've, I've been messing it up left and right, boys. <laughs> uh, that's if you if you don't have your account, that'll get you in. We're keeping the bots out. But the <clears throat> says, hey, DGC, I want to run a perpetual grow of autoflowers, and we're going to talk about not just autoflowers here. Um, but that's pretty cool. Perpetual grow of autoflowers one plant at a time. I live in Prohibition land and grow using a bottom water sip bucket or I grow using a bottom water sip bucket system yeah. and hop water recharge once a week. I've got okay. one, three, five and seven gallon systems. In your experience, what size would give me a better root ball? In other words, is a tight but small root ball better or worse than a large but loose root ball? Assuming that the total mass of the root balls are the same. Interesting. Well, one yield more than the other, and which would give danker buds and larger plant mass, all using the same growing conditions, needs, and phenotype. Okay. Interesting, so, I mean, sir. You mind? I, if, uh, yes, ahead. sir. I was just going to say, um, before I had to learn a little bit about nursery practices, best practices, I went to a couple conventions, uh, Nursery Growers and Landscape Association. I'm a member. And there is best practices for stepping up at least uh, uh, like nursery material. And the idea is to grow a dense root ball right from the solo cup. And then, Grandma, do you see best contain? Uh, yeah, this one. Thank you. 
Uh, this is uh, different size containers all the way up from half gallon, gallon, two, three, five, seven, and 10. And just if you look at the width of them, you'll see what best nursery practices are. You start with the six inch and then you expand very slowly out seven and a half inch, a nine inch, 11. And you don't have to hit all these, but you might go from a seven and a half to an 11 inch to a three, all one gallon to a three gallon. And the idea is just that little thickness, that little, uh, a perimeter of roots or of soil can root out and you just keep that going and that gives you a dense dense root mass so that's best nursery practices but these aren't nursery plants these are annuals and then we got to take into consideration minimizing <laughs> the labor depending on how many plants you have um can be a pain in the ass if you're going from ones to you know whatever transplanting is work mm -hmm. uh i you know i'll have 15 plants but definitely in a review to come as I've said, if you listen to the show, I last went from a rooted plug, like basically your, your rapid rooter or whatever, a rooted out, very rooted out, ready to go, plants already three to four inches tall into a five gallon uh, container, one month of edge, then straight to bloom. Right now, my plants in those five gallon containers are between two and a half to three feet tall at the most. Not many, I've been really working with that. I see a lot of growers growing more legs, more stem than bud. Because I have yes. some other plants in this room that that were my mom's, and they were rooted out in two gals, and I transplanted a two into a five. Those plants are at least a foot to a foot and a half taller than the other ones, and I don't visually they don't look like they're going to have a ton more yield. So I'm really questioning how long, as far as uh, us as growers, um, go to different sizes and try to grow big plants, bigger vegetative plants. I see here in the notes you say are more small plants the way. If I could touch <laughs> on that. I think so to a degree, because when you grow out a 10 gal, a seven gal, you have a lot of bud. You can have a pretty big bush. You used to say washing machines, Scotty. You love, I grow washing machines. Oh yeah. But a washing machine can give you a lot of bud, but not as when you have smaller plants, I think it makes the trimming easier. You have more prime buds, right? There's... Instead of the side, the more side buds, the more you go down, the larfier they get to a degree, no? Yeah, there's so much advantage to growing more small plants. And specifically is that me and like Dr. Christian were talking a couple of days ago. And the older the plant you get, whether it's to take clones from or just in general, these plants are annuals and they have like a, they got a power band, man. All right. And that, that's right in uh, uh, the first three, four months is when they really go nuts. Once you start keeping them and they're getting woody and, and older, uh, it's not the the growth, the the vigor, I think, does slow. So I love the idea of flowering up a three-week-old or a four-week-old plant and maybe, what, a three. I do mine in my real buckets that are essentially, what, four-gallon, five-gallons. Uh, but just quick flowering them up, man. I like that. Yeah, my, my, my buddy grower just for the first time went down to three gals from fives, and he's growing about the same size plants. Um, and he's like, you know, he's still testing. So to think, and he grows, uh, I don't know how many plants at a time, quite a few. And that again, adds up on saving money, 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 media, or whatever, depending on your potting mixes, cocoa, good peat, our premium, we use the most premium planting mixes in cannabis production. It's not, are you use, are you reusing your media? I am. Um, that, that would be a question for you, Scotty, and not to put you on the spot. Maybe we should revisit it because uh, I grow with grow dots. Currently, so I was unsure yep. on the best practices for reusing a cocoa um, with grow dots. So I haven't yet. Um, that's to be decided. Definitely, you can reuse cocoa and you can reuse peat, reamending fresh in. But this isn't that episode. I did want to bring it back quickly to this because uh, well, you didn't let me answer the variant. question. I got a really easy thing. Go you squeeze the grow dots. Right. You can absolutely reuse your media. I do it all the time. I shake the root ball out and reuse it. You squeeze the grow dots. You'll see there's absolutely nothing in there. And that's how you know that they're uh, they're no threat. They're adding no more nutrient. But that's all you got to do. Cool, cool. Uh, and this question again from Thunder the Budbarian. Uh, Maestro had a good because he's specifically talking about autos and his question. Maestro, what is up? First off, hope you're doing all right, buddy. Maestro says, the more root space will always be beneficial. It's on the grower to water them correctly. Autos are a total crapshoot with no way to know how they'll be uh, get based on how big they'll get based on vigor. Totally agree. There's no way to say for sure with so many unknowns. A good bet, though, would be three to five gallon pots. You get about a month or so of edge before transitioning to flower. Not much time to fill a large pot with roots. 
So I'm curious of how full my five barrels are with roots after only a one month veg from clone. Um, but I bet they're pretty damn full. They're drinking. Well, <laughs> well, what about when you, you know, I'm kicking my roots out when I'm, when I'm recycling the soil or even when I'm just throwing everything out, I don't throw the soil out. In worst case scenario, I'll go sprinkle it in my garden. Uh, but when I'm busting those roots out, mine are in, you know, basically four or five gallon, you know, I guess they're about four gallon containers, the inner sleeve of the, of the real bucket. And I'm getting mm-hmm. dense roots, man. I'm getting dense roots that I have to, man, I should go get some. I think I'd get in trouble for showing roots, Grambo. I won't. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a dense root mass because they keep on rooting just because they're in uh, uh, out of flower. I'm sorry, out of veg, rather. Uh, they have to keep on making roots, man. There's just too many roots in there. Yeah, old hippie 58 had a cool comment. A larger pot will definitely do better. Better drainage slash water and newt retention for one thing. In nature, plants furthest outward reach, reaching branches to find its drip line. That drip line is also how far you can expect the roots to reach out. Knowing that, I believe the bigger pots are going to produce healthier, bigger plants. I grow photo period plants in three to seven gallon pots, depending on how big I'm going to let the plants get during flower. But you doesn't touch- performance say that cyclical irrigation, watering them multiple times a day, uh, letting them go from wet to dry back, wet to dry back is the way to grow uh, big yield and really good quality plants because you're always. Well, that makes sense. And if <laughs> in the, so I water every day. So that's cyclical in some degree. Some people have an irrigation system, they water six times a day. I could water twice as much. My plants get about, I think, about a half gallon in a five gallon pot of water every day. I lift it up. I'm like, that's pretty good. I could right. water a whole gallon into one of those pots and get by longer. But I'm in, then I'm going to be in that zone of saturation with not as much oxygen in the root zone for longer, right? Yeah. Or that plant isn't going to perform as well. It'll still perform, but it's not going to perform as well. And I think that's part of the cyclical irrigation is you always have that right, just really nice amount of oxygen. Uh, ratio for your roots because they obviously when you water in pulling oxygen down to the root zone um so yeah <laughs> there is something about that dry back we should we should get like dr christian on or an actual scientist to teach us about that but that dry back period man the plants do really thrive you ever go into your garden you forgot the water and they're just blowing up the plants are blowing up but you're like oh my god these pots are so dry <laughs> man what's happening this this screenshot grandma dr christian <laughs> Kristen, I think. Christian, 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 like, Christian man. Christian. Right? He almost yes. looks like he's AI'd into that group. <laughs> like, he does like, look really AI, doesn't he? <laughs> Grandpa, we, we Googled two computers arguing with each other today, oh, and it's, it's an awesome. It's like a minute long, yes. and they're yelling at each yes. other. They're getting angry. Yeah, they start talking about God. <laughs> they do start going to God pretty quick, man. <laughs> yeah. Well, you guys uh, missed this, by the way. This was our, our last live panel at Colin Thermethos. We had a PhD on, bro, and uh, Brad, uh, Scotty, and myself. So don't, make sure you're not missing our live panel shows every Monday. And also uh, click that live tab on our playlist, and you'll see those. Um, Hey, one thing, okay. was, Dr. Christian yeah. texted me and was like, dude, I love being on y'all's show and I really appreciated your audience. He was complimenting the audience. Uh, he was super psyched about it. So thank you. You, you impressed the doctor, DGC. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> one thing you said about con- container size, it is nice when you are running smaller containers, moving them around the grow. You know, if it grows a valuable space. So like when I open my grow room door, immediately I have to start moving my plants around on the roll saucer so I have can create my center aisle so I can get to the back plants. Um, so that is one thing. And if, also, if you have to isolate or take a plant out, if you're dealing with pests, mildew, molds, stay tuned on the mold part. Dude has news, but we'll wait. We'll wait so in my much. eye. <laughs> the fans <Jeez>. blow on uh, <laughs> But yeah, basically... Um, that is one nice thing, but you are going to have to be prepared to water more often, especially, and I did want to shout out fabric pots. I'm learning here. I used to grow, um, man, back in the day, shout out, there was Radical Bags, which were the first air pruning, they were a sponsor of the show. Then uh, Rain Science, they're still in business, cool company. They got the mesh bags that air, yep. air prune. And now I'm just using, because I had them available to me, I use AC Infinity 5 gal fabric pots. But dude, they add humidity like, crazy i'm just struggling with humidity because obviously you have your whole surface area just vaporing off what's up this is uh grassroots fabric pots right 
no, that's what I got. So if you scroll oh, down, Grambo, these guys are have cool. the, these guys are a friend of mine, man. Yeah. Super cool guy. Tyler, what's up? Yeah, Tyler. Shout out. I gave him a call. He's he's like, Yeah, man, I got you. We'll get some of these from the DDC too. They're living soil. So they have a classic fabric pot there. <laughs> um, no, scroll up, Grambo, so you can show the pot. Yeah, right there. So the classic ones on the left, and then the living soil fabric pot, it has a a membrane or a liner, I'll say. So that part of the pot is membrane. not going to transpire. It's going to push your roots down mm. to where the bottom has your breathable uh, part down at the bottom, which isn't here. If I can read the description, I'm trying to scroll for Ambo's page. Here we go. Um, it says the living soil fabric pots and beds recre recreate the top down drying pattern that is found as nature. Since it's not going to transcend your following me, Scotty. And he said these should reduce humidity. He said in some grows, 10 to 15%. If that's the case, I'm going to be like, holy shiz, this is awesome. So we'll I give everybody a warning about that, man. Fabric pots, they're, you know, in larger container sizes in general are cool, but they will raise the humidity of your grow. Difference between three gallons of, you know, saturated material or semi saturated and uh, seven or 10 gallons is. Well, it's a few gallons. No, it's, it's you know, double or triple. You've got that much, much more water wicking. I mean, I tried oh, one of these grassroots fabric beds, and it was cool. <laughs> but my God, the moisture was insane, man. Now, now they got the fabric beds lined to help with that humidity. Um, and also air, like air pockets. You can have part of a fabric. I always have to rotate my plants because I have fans at either end on the floor in my grow room, uh, as well as wall fans. So the plants that are at either end of the row, they get more air movement. They get a little drier. They need a little more, you know, water. So they, I always rotate them around, but this will also help um, with just different dry air pockets happening in, in a fabric pot, which I do like fabric pots. I do like any form of air pruning. I think you're going to have better performance than a nursery pot. Not saying you can't use them. Soup says, hey, I just use the plastic nursery pots over and over and over and over again, and I'm fine with my results. Outside in the, the wrap on nursery pots, outside at least, as they get hot. They're black and they get hot and your roots don't like to be, you know, in the middle of the sun in Florida. The, they can heat my bamboo roots up to 120 degrees. So it's uh that's a, a big thing about why fabric pots are better. I'm excited to see uh, how well these do because I'm obviously looking at my freaking data all the time. I mean, I'm, I'm on my second dehumidifier now. That's a commercial grade Waycar, W-A-Y-K-A-R, 155 pint. Metal. I love it because it's all metal, Scotty. Heavy and metals, let's see bro. How, how, right now with lights off, we're doing, uh, come on, baby. Come on, Pulse. <laughs> I like how thinking? the dude has turned into me and I've turned into the dude. You know, the guy, you know, I would use to look for every advantage I possibly could back in the day. And now I couldn't give an, an F, man. All, all that means is there's balance in the universe. Guys. Yeah. No, <laughs> yeah. but that's right. There is balance in my grow, and I've achieved the balance in there, and it doesn't really need me too much. I just get to hang out there and scope trikes, bro. <laughs> hey, we're scope getting there. Trikes. I mean, I just built, this is my first, you know, run in this room, so I'm like on it. 58% right now with the lights off. Are you okay with that? Are you all right with 58%? Yeah, absolutely, man. Sure. Sure. All right. Anything around 60, in my opinion. Am I too oversimplifying it? I just uh, was reading about, well, let's save it. I, I got a whole new, uh, hell, let's do some after show. I got some quick after show. How about that? Let's throw oh, a little yeah. after show if we can for the patrons. Um, just what's going on in Dudes Grow and uh, bring it back here because you had best container size. Did you have a link for best container size for autos? So is it going to agree with what we've been saying? This is, <clears throat> I just think you got to touch on autos. Uh, man, there are decent autos out there. I don't like to see everybody hating on autos, uh, but autos are different because they definitely do not like to be transplanted. So you got to pot them in the side in the container you want to finish in. And Grandpa, would you scroll down a little bit? It was this one was talking. It actually predicted you go down. There's an infographic. I don't know if that's what you'd call it. Keep going. That thing right there, man. It was looking. It shows you. You know, it's. <laughs> that's pretty a one to three gallon pot for an auto you're gonna get a 10 to oh they're giving you the average yield. yield i don't trust that already man a <laughs> 10 to 30 gram yield on a three gallon auto is that right 30 grams Jeez. that's an ounce man you're gonna get more than an ounce from a three gallon auto i'd hope so i'd hope, I'd hope anyway. so as well there's but there's the three to five gallon container look at the at the plant size 
That's interesting. Except Grambo, you know, they just inflated that 30% on Photoshop. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't matter. All right. I, I learned something from this. But it, all, all I mean is, yeah, the bigger the container size, the more uh, you're going to allow that plant to grow. So I would think the bigger the yields you're going to get. Yeah. And that, like Maestro was saying, totally depends on vigor. I, I had some very vigorous uh, auto shout out to Easy Days, Easy Days Cultivados, um, but I didn't see, I did it in a three gal. I wish I would have done, I see they're showing a 10 to 15 gallon pot, which I haven't heard of people doing an auto in, but it had vigor. I think it could have taken off of that. Ooh, air pots. Those are weird. Yeah. My neighbor uses those and right. he likes them, but they're kind of weird. Like, they dry out fast. Yes. Lots of room for that. I think that's what Matt uses when I was talking to him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they actually sell those for nursery material as well. Fast growing trees, oh, yeah. brah. Yeah. Well, I know one thing about nursery that is you had a buddy in the fabric pot business. And what not one of the reasons that they choose fabric pots is the root pruning and the fact that a plant can stay healthier in there for a long amount of time before it reaches market or before it reaches like a, an end place for it to be sold to the consumer for their house or whatever. Absolutely. Definitely. Save money while spraying your grow guys, a little squirt, squirt, hook it up. My favorite product, optic foliar transport. When you're spraying, whether you're doing something for IPM, maybe you're foliar feeding, you got to deal with some mold and mildews, Optic Foliar Transport gets it into the mesic field there, spray with the lights on more efficiently. You're gonna be able to use your products at lower than label rates, sometimes as much as quarter strength. That's where you're gonna be saving the money while doing the spraying, making your plants happy. Check out opticfoliar.ca, yell at your local hydro store, tell them to hook it up for you, and shout out one of the biggest OG supporters, Dinesh, over Optic Foliar. Other products as well, ready to use, overgrow, Plenty of foliar nutrition over there. ATAC for molds and mildews. Go take a look. OpticFoliar.ca. I'm out. Let's do some uh, producer shout outs. A little real growers. Uh, we could call it love coming your way. A lot's been going on over on Patreon, man. I can't keep. Banner's like, I don't know if he's good with inventory because he's giving away Bull Fire, Ira Genetics. He's got some DJ shorts up there now. And he's the man that does the Know Your Breeders. So I can't really say, hey, don't do this with these seeds. But he's like just bombing it all out so you're missing out you're not over Rambo, don't show these man i see you have them on deck do not show these all right all right all right after show after show okay yeah this oh, is we're nervous pack, but you know, dj short with very blatant bud pictures those are going on now guys there's one two three four five six seven dj short packs up for grabs over on patreon if you don't know what i'm talking about dudegrows.com forward slash support ten dollars a month but this comment in from zardo zar no no we had to pick some winners for the Soul Fire Pack, Scotty. Um, and this is, you can, I think you can show this picture, Grambo. It's clean. Yeah, show the Soul Fire Packs here that we put together. Uh, it's like a hoodie, a hat, two packs of seeds. They had scissors. He, Banner put together some cool packs of Soul Fire. So nice. we're hooking those up to comments. And I'm going to start it off with Zard Knock. And these are the things that, what are your favorite quotes from the Dude Grow Show? We covered some of these on the Saturday show, Scotty. <laughs> yeah. Like one again. <laughs> I got a couple new ones. Zard Knock, and this is for you guys. Uh, if your comments featured, I've already messaged you, you're winning some soul fire. It says every time or every show, I love it when Scotty says he doesn't want to make it into a recharge commercial and then explains why recharge will fix their grow problem. Uh. He isn't wrong. <laughs> recharge is amazing, but still funny. Always, always has to qualify it first. I love it. You know what? I do have, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, you are right. You always feel like a little bit of a sellout when you're going to be like, hey, you know what would fix this is my product. But uh, <laughs> there are a lot of times with a lot of things that I put in recharge that will absolutely help a garden. And man, there's a lot of components in there that uh, we should all know about, man. Things like kelp. I think we've got uh, somebody using too much kelp coming up. Uh, humix and uh, I'm, what we just talked about, amino acids as chelators recently. I mean, there's a bunch of cool stuff to to springboard talking about when you talk about real growers recharge. We put all that stuff in there, man. Man, I've already said right, that was one of my biggest top things <laughs> for maybe one LED lighting or maybe one microbes. You know, first what I learned about was mycorrhiza, and then it's like, holy cow, there's bacteria, there's trichoderma, and then they eat. Yep. They need the the sugars. Like just learning everything about how nature does it. Uh, and it is a great compliment to anything you guys are running. I did a test back in the day. Uh, it was RX Green Solutions back in the day was the name of the nutrient. I liked it. Simple part. A and B, 
and recharge. I wanted to see how simple now you got grow dots and recharge, but you can just run a very base nutrient. One other additive yep. succeeds. The Zardnock, Soulfire Seeds for you. Terpy Uper, Terpy Uper, OGE supporter, dude, grow show, buddy. I got, he says, I love it when dude says, summer, summertime. So yeah. I'll take that one. You can get some Soul Fire packs, although it's making me sad now because it's not summer, summertime. You know when I do get happy, Scotty? It's March, I think it's 12th. It's when the clocks, that's when it finally we bring ahead. Is that what we say? It's uh, going forward. Uh, I'm going to be happy June 1st when all those tickets that everyone bought at dgccup.com are, they're usable. I love it. Nice. <laughs> I am excited for that. That was my corporate show for the cup plug. But yeah, no, I, I really am. That's that's my summer, summer time. Uh, hey, can I take this really here. quick? Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, Minnesota High Life says he likes it when I hijack. Can I hijack this? Yeah. Okay. Sometimes I do. Usually, it's all you can do sometimes is a hijack, all right? It's usually acceptable. It's usually a good move. I'll take it. <laughs> Minnesota High Life Soul Flower for you. we got two more packs. Get in the pool, 27. Look at when Scotty says, maybe shouldn't have smoked the whole joint. Yeah. And that's a typical tip you're smoking. Is it one J per shot? Did you just smoke a J off cam, I believe? Possibly. Allegedly. <laughs> what you, uh, yeah, but <clears throat> by the end of it, so there's some strains where the words don't really work anymore. You know, there's different strains. There's what are they safe for work and not safe for work strains? Ooh, I like that. It's <laughs> right? TSF weed. Yeah. <laughs> Put a label on it, um, you know. One more from I couldn't I can't I could do a whole J, but I I don't do a whole J. It'd be too much for me. Too much. Yeah. Torpedo. Torpedo. This is a good one. My favorite saying at Dude Grow Show is check my weed privilege. Mm, you guys give me a glimpse of what the future <laughs> can be in a legal state. All that's in my future is legal bills and possible incarceration if I let my guard down too much. Paranoia doesn't help the feeling of satisfaction and euphoria I get from a medication. All right. Yeah, I agree, man. Uh, and typically, I mean, you shouldn't have too much paranoia if you got shiz on the down low, you know, in, in a legal state. But there are still some states that are just like, you're, you're going down. You're going to have a bit, bit of an inconvenience, a court date, some fines. Yeah. Um, I don't think many. Many people are going to jail anymore without any type of record or whatnot. But I don't know at all. <laughs> Who doesn't have any kind of record? And sometimes it just depends on attitude, right? Like me and dude were talking before the show that sometimes you have to do things and you just have to roll over and just go kiss the boot and go, yes, yes, yes. You know, so maybe some people are going to jail and others aren't. Rambo's kissing a boot. <laughs> well, that's how they say about in Canada. Uh, <laughs> couple quick Very ones cool. here. Happy birthday to one eyed cat cannabis. Just had his birthday. Hey, hey we baked him a cake, man. We hey, baked him a cake. What's this? You know? what's this? <laughs> oh, it's just a little birthday. It's full of all his favorite things. Uh, it's good stuff. <laughs> it's full of all oh, his favorite I think there's some catnip on there, too. Uh, that's Lush. hilarious. <laughs> some dude nip. Yes. Also, shout out to Vercelli. Is that how I say? Ver. Ver Vercelli, Vercelli G, Vercelli. Vercelli sounds delicious, doesn't it? Vercelli, that's like the swirly ones, right? Vercelli. <laughs> How about Cloner eighty eight? Cloner, do it, dude. Like Grows dot com forward slash support guys. We should change that forward slash become DGC man. Join the community. If you're a grower, tenfold dividends kicking back at you from real growers. These seeds we're always looking up. The after shows. The 420 happy hour. Too much to say, Scotty. Too much. Newgrows.com forward slash support. What can Cloner 88 mean? And we were doing the math on the Super Bowl a couple of days ago. And uh, we were like, hey, that, that dude was born in 1988. Yeah. You know, like it was people like the year I graduated high school, some of the Super Bowl yeah. uh, players were born. So I'm thinking it could have been his birth date. The year he graduated, or the number of clone sites that his bubble cloner had. <laughs> um, <three. laughs> I, I would buy. I would buy a sure. cloner eighty eight. Yeah, it's a cloner more. eighty eight. It's, right? it's all I use. Yeah, me too, man. Dude, grow slash support. It's quality slash pros. <laughs> Prohibition report here. I guess we're gonna be careful right off the bat on this article, Grandpa. Looks like a big, big fat nug right away. Is there? So, oh oh no. It's a, oh no, we got it. <laughs> U.S. Navy expands. There you go. U.S. Navy expands marijuana waiver 
Authority, marijuana waiver authority to address recruiting shortfalls. And uh, they are just having to waive uh, people testing positive for cannabis that want to get into the military because uh, they don't have enough people to get into the military. That's funny. Yeah. You're kidding. You're kidding me. You know, actually, militaries, there's, uh, there's some good careers in the military. I just figure they're more and more automating, which is like the rest of the world. Um, saw a YouTuber going through some old towns in the South that are just like, so much is changing, man. We all like granted, like when coal goes away and like kills a whole area or something, but that's yeah. changing more and more for even people like at this grocery store. You don't even check out anymore. More coal anyway, plants, man. No, I'm just kidding, man. We need to retrain those people, man. All right. So it says uh, if they fail a test when they show up to boot camp, if they fail that test and own up and say, yes, I smoke marijuana, they have to own up, Scotty. We do an evaluate. <laughs> We do an evaluation of the young person to make sure there's not something else going on. Okay. Mm. That means what? Do they give him a five panel drug test then? Let's see what's going on. <laughs> Pills, coke, fentanyl. Be a good place to uh, try out, though, right? Honestly, if you were, if you did have like some kind of a habit, didn't that you know what Stripes was all about? The movie Stripes? Yeah. They threw him on the military. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is they're going. Uh, the Navy is going to meet, is trying to meet its 2024 recruiting goal, bringing on 40,000 new sailors. Damn. All right. Also, this is they're losing. No, sorry. 4,000 recruits is what they're lo losing during boot camp. It is really, really unhelpful. Yeah. So you just really need to change, especially considering the alternatives. We always talk about Scotty, like, very long, hard day. You want to smoke a J, chill out, verse. People like to do things to release. You know, you have too many yeah. drinks. It's way more going to affect you the next day. Hangovers, yada, yada. So, yeah, they really need to embrace the route. Dude, which armed yeah, services? Which armed services are you going to go to, man? You got to pick one. I think the Navy's got to either the Navy or the Air Force. Probably the Navy's got to be the safest one, right? Dude, they don't really blow up dude's ships gonna be too a, much. Dude's going to be a Mountie. Yeah, he'll be doing whatever <laughs> one you get to ride a horse, man. That's <laughs> what <Somebody>, Doodly do right. <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that's a tough one. That is a tough one. Back in the day, I did actually have a Marine recruiter sitting at my dining room table when I was oh in high school. God. I knew it. That's yeah. where you'd go, man. The Air Force sounds cool until you realize that you're in an airplane and people are shooting at you. Like that kind of kills the oh. buzz about being in a cool airplane. <laughs> they don't fly them anymore. Just kidding. But uh, we're on drone stuff here on. Um, well, that's good news, man. Uh, the only thing that obviously stinks is that I'm, I'm assuming, of course, they're still not going to allow cannabis use once you're in the military, once you're going through your different training and whatnot, um, which strictly falls, I think, along. You know, when you join the, you're going through boot camp and all that, they don't say, hey, you cannot, you're not allowed to drink anymore, period. Um, because obviously they can test for alcohol accurately right. at the time of, you know, intoxication of any form, whereas cannabis, they still don't have that down. And I don't think ever will. I don't think the science is ever going to, because how high somebody is, because it's completely an evaluation, how that person can handle cannabis. You know, some people I've seen like at the DGC cup, like, man, you're still functioning totally fine, bro. I can't believe it. Isn't being like fitness where you always see these movies where they're going through boot camp and they have to be really fit and you have to stay in good shape. Um, if that yeah. was the if that was the case, wouldn't you rather them smoking weed developing <laughs> a drinking problem? I, th or I think some of those uh, uh, those branches, some of their motto is kill, kill, kill. You know, and I, I don't think that the certain lifestyle choices. Oh, the, the weeds, you know, kill, yeah, yeah, versus makes just like vodka. Like, oh, kill. <laughs> yeah, let's take a shot. Yeah. 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 Huh. yeah. They're 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 really doing not one funny <laughs> tidbit from this article out of marijuanamoment.net, by the way. Um, it says in February, the Department of Defense said marijuana's active ingredient, Delta 9, is the most THC is the most common <laughs> substance that appears on positive drug trust for active military service yeah. members. The second most common substance is Delta 8. Nice. Uh, <laughs> that's so funny. You do get people doing weird things oh, when they're uh, when they're being drug tested. I swear you know? it was THCA when I smoked it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah 
But yeah. be careful. We got another we got another big bud coming right at us. <laughs> Lawmakers move to end marijuana testing for more federal job applicants and promote psychedelic access for military members. Mm, nice. Interesting, right? As long as you just read the headline, that sounds awesome, right? <laughs> That's it. Let's move on. Good Next. news. Next. Um, I think we get it, man. We get the gist, right? Everybody's having a hard time hiring because people like to smoke weed. And I don't think everybody wants to work for the government or be in the military. So if you want those, what they call it, a Venn diagram, where if you want those to intersect and get enough people, yeah. allowing people to smoke weed will help. I mean, but promoting, so psychedelics, I could see for PTSD, I could see for mm -hmm. self-reflection um, with guidance, you know, with somebody that's a professional that's going to take you through that experience, not saying you have to. That's what they're saying here. TBI, traumatic, uh, uh, traumatic brain injuries and post-traumatic disorders. But active, like, mushrooms can definitely make you really compassionate and really think about what that's going on, too. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, you're right. fun, you find out, like, a lot of it doesn't help. Like, all of a sudden, a lot of people start, like, dropping out of the military. But granted, well, this not is, all the military. I'm, this, this isn't the military. This is federal jobs, you know? Well, oh, I see what you're saying. The psychedelic okay. for militaries. I'm sorry. You're correct. Yeah, yeah. I was just thinking federal uh, workers, you know, like uh, if you're an accountant for the government, you're like, dude, I can't smoke, man. I have a government. You never hang hung out with those guys who are like, oh, I'd love to smoke, man, but I can't. I have a government job. Are they drug tag. I'm subject to random drug testing. And like they're like an accountant or something like that. They test mushrooms, though. That's not really a drug test. No, I know. I'm I don't think familiar. so. They got to do a spinal tap, bra. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Those were the days pre-internet. Oh golly! Both Good though, story. both though, both of those items, this and psychedelics, military should have full access, hundred percent. Law enforcement, all of them. Man, they're dealing with some heavy shiz at times. Yeah, you ain't kidding. I could not imagine that job. Me and Grandpa were talking about jobs that I couldn't imagine doing mm -hmm. and like waking up in the morning and being a dentist. That was my example. <laughs> that and it's not just mental, like a higher doses of psilocybin actually increased neurogenesis, creates new pathways in the brain. So God, I need that. Yeah. Tanazi, let's <laughs> call. I do need that for real. <laughs> Oh, I'm planning a well, session with Tanazi. I actually told Scott, I was like, I'm going on a little vision I, quest in a couple of weeks because I've been feeling like depressive because of the winter and everything. And he's like, I know how to snap you out. It scared the Jesus out of me. And I knew that's how I, yes. Dude, I love you, but I don't think I can share it with you. Let's go. No. <laughs> like, I'm just going to walk for a while, man. All right. I'm just going to walk. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm going to let people know, hey, if you're sitting there or having a good time, take a moment. Just like and subscribe. Like and make a comment if you'd like. I tried to get some more comments last week. I wasn't, I wasn't, I didn't see a ton. I wanted to hear about the trimmers out there, man. The shake trimmer, the, uh, the yeah. bowl trim, uh, <laughs> the rotating bowl trim. Uh, so give me some of those comments, guys. And it does help grow the channel. It does help our mission in normalizing cannabis, pushing prohibition down. So please do subscribe if you haven't already. And also check out our pros, man. That's a great way to vote with the dollars to grows.com forward slash pros. All our pros are listed out there. Look at that. Bam. Hot deals, coupon codes listed to save you money in your road. Did you see embedded here? Dang right. it. Take us to the cup. Take us to the comments, Scotty. Wait, thank you, my friend. There was one uh, regarding uh, your trimming, regarding shake trimmers that you were talking okay. about. <clears throat> this is uh, from Smoke Chronic. Chron oh, Smoke Chronic, not meth. <laughs> all right that's okay. good smoke, man. all right what the dare you to wear let's put that bumper sticker on your car why and i dare you it says f trimming with prices as low as they are people are lucky i knock off any fan leaves <laughs> <laughs> got a point man i am not trimming i just throw it on the on the stem i put some of those uh uh, the moisture packs. I always think of Banner's reframe on it where he's like, it's just a roll cage, man. They protect the bud. Yeah, he he does. He takes it out and then he gives it the final trim before he smokes it. Yeah. And it is a roll cage. He's right. It's a roll cage. Mm. All right. I got one from AJ Moriria 81. Hmm. Saying, guys, and we were talking about using the dehumidifier. Should you use your dehumidifier water to water your grow? 
and Amora, Amoria <laughs> says, guys, don't use dehumidifier water. That is just nasty. Why? Tell me why. Why is it nasty? I don't think yeah, I was nasty. confused too. Um, where Legion 7436 says, is it okay to use your dehumidifier water? Um, wait, to use the water from your tent's dehumidifier to feed your plants. And I never really thought about it. There was another one. I was trying to look for the comment. I'm sorry I missed it. But uh, it was, uh, is I think dehumidifier water is loaded with heavy metals. And it did get me thinking, man, it is running. That's running off a metal coil. It's usually an aluminum and copper coil. So it is dripping down that aluminum. So it definitely got me Googling uh, Quest dehumidifiers, friends of the show. Uh, they went and did all sorts of testing on it. And and they found that aluminum, there was zero parts per billion detected. Wow. Copper, there was 74 parts per billion. So that is less than one part and per this, billion. Wow. This was out of a random dehumidifier that says uh, that it had been running in a basement. So it wasn't like one of their brand new units. Um, and yeah, that 74 uh, parts per weight. Notice that the highest level of any metal was 75 parts per billion. And that is even a safe level to drink. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Interesting. I'd say uh, that the the usual, the kind of dehumidifiers we all use are those cheapo Walmart crappy ones. Right. Maybe they're not. But what this does is like, even if it is leaching crappier ones, I mean, parts per billion. I mean, even if it yeah. is a couple parts per million and the crappier ones, yeah, maybe I can live with that. Hang on. They're talking about the slime, though. I do know what they're talking about. After a while, dehumidifier water will just get like slime mm. in it. So, yeah, I guess that Wait. could be nasty. Mine's been clean for years, though. So it just goes on real quick. It says, after completing this first test, sharing the results with the gardener, I was told my test was flawed. And a new, a new unit would have higher heavy metal tests. So they tested a brand new unit. And it didn't have anything higher. It even had less. And then yeah. thirdly, the story continues. Um, I was working with a commercial aquaponics farmer in Wisconsin. And when I asked them if they'd used dehumidifier water, they firmly stated, no way. And so they went and tested the water out of their dehumidifiers. And again, it was completely fine, like neg negligible. So thanks for finding the reports, the analytical reports, Scotty. We need the data. Yeah. How's my pulse doing? Hey, thank you, Quest, for doing the work. All I had to do was Google. I've been repeating that for a decade and it's glad to finally have a little bit of actual knowledge not 100 yeah, yeah. true you just yell things into your phone now right? yeah. <laughs> all right how about recording you want me to take this one yeah this is regarding leaving your grow like leaving a friend or in this case your wife to watch your grow <laughs> says i just came back oh sorry city going country what is up i just came back from honduras on a diving trip yeah. Shot dive too. My wife stayed hey, home. Yeah, wait, wait, wait. We gotta <laughs> acknowledge, right? He went on a shark dive in Honduras. <laughs> That's less That's dangerous dope. than leaving your wife at home while you do it. Uh, <laughs> which one could more go wrong? Yeah. You know, which has more blood? Uh, oh, no, no. It's like one of those misunderstood things. Just like bears, you can pet them. Why? Um, no, bears, bro. Shark, different types of things. sharks, man. There's different. There's they there's mostly that are, don't care. Most of the time, even some of the more aggressive ones, mostly don't care. Don't say dude said they mostly don't care and do something. Nah, but uh -uh, man, don't mess with aggressive. <laughs> don't mess with sharks, man. What, what are the ones? I thought we were talking about wives, sir. Ah, uh, there's ones that are jerks that are in Florida, man. You see them, you you swim away Tiger from them. No, no, bull no shark. they're the bull shark. There you go, man. There you go. I'm over. Uh, there's a reason they call them bull sharks. Says my wife stayed home. She took care of the group. Nice of her to do. I had a flooded tent and the tent wasn't all the way closed. How can I argue with her? I left her in Buffalo to go diving in Central America. Yeah. I win, I lose. Just throw in the towel on that one. <laughs> so, but I want to make this clear. She did not stay home just to take care of the plants. She was well taken care of. I'm still getting extorted over this. She couldn't go uh, due to the new job. Got it. It's I love just, it. She's uh, like getting even. I mess up his plants. <laughs> no, no, but I guess nobody cares like you do, right? That's going to be a hard one to not have a little bit of resentment. No, <laughs> not hold on to a little something there. Uh, dude, you're the dude. Uh, you just let it go, wouldn't you? I have trouble with it with myself right now. I mean, this is a newer grow. And whenever I go in there, um, it's like, 
man, would they, would, would, would I feel, I feel to explain this good enough. And I always try to simplify it, you know, or are they going to do this like me? And chances are they're not. You just got to hope and that it's everything's going to be kept alive and you're basically water. And that's where I'm judging because I really need to get back to the bakery there. I'm trying to come down to Colorado to hang out. Um, and it's like, dude, I'm not, not till after this harvest. No way. Like I'd be too paranoid. You guys would be like, dude, stop looking at your, your freaking go app. Yeah. yeah. It'd be okay. Uh, if something but, goes wrong, yeah. it's pretty helpless too, you know? But I mean, anymore, you tell the kid, you know, hold the phone up like this. All right. Point it there. All right. Do me a favor. Walk <laughs> over here. Grab that bottle. Not that bottle. Grab that spoon there. You know what I mean? Hey, come zip the tent up when you leave. Show them. You know what I mean? Like. I guess that's the difference between having a kid and your wife. <laughs> no. Yeah, she probably ain't doing that. I'm going to do a few more shots here. TDC yeah. Caduceus, thank you very much for doing what you do, taking advantage of all those benefits at dogrows.com forward slash support. I'm going to give it up to I Love Skulk. Oh, I Love Skulk. I don't know. Are you into skunky strains? Simon, I don't, I don't have never grown a skunk strain. Uh, yeah, I have, man. Yeah, I like them. They're they're like weed, and they get you high, and they smell like weed. Good. Uh, well, when you're driving and you smell the skunk, and to you it smells good because you're a grower, and to the other people in the car, they're like stinks. Like, mm, yeah, just don't grow. That's one of those like smoke what scenarios, you right. know? Yeah, you know, always reveals yourself. It's like, ooh, I like that. Yeah. What you got, Scotty? Uh, I dig it. Butterlicious green thumb. That is just their first name, okay? No, but I'm going with Budacious. Go with is Budacious. it? I thought it was Butterlicious, man. But sure, oh. you're right, man. This, this one could go either way. No, I, there's no Licious in there, is oh, there? Yeah, yeah, I'm not the one to ever ask about <laughs> reading. I have to realize that. I'll make up syllables and stuff, man. Don't forget about Burt, DWC, hanging in there with the deep water culture. What's up, Burt? Thank you, DDC producers. Yes. You're the benefits, man. If you don't know what I'm talking about, dogrows.com forward slash support. Another comment from PXN, PX in America? PX in America. <laughs> PX in America. <laughs> All right. Yeah, okay, that works. Um, and I, did I show this picture? I must have showed, I showed this on the show and forgot. I, I actually had um, two different places, like literally trike like a little bud coming right out of the middle of the five leaf right where all the uh, petioles if they if i will come yep. together Same. or the, the leaf and and so i was like what is this and so kind of whack and P px in the marca i've got a bud growing out of the center of a fan leaf on this grow if i was to clone that branch or pollinate that specific flower what are the chances the seeds produced contain similar traits I get it where he's going we won't have to trim if we have enough buds on our leaves <laughs> <laughs> nice you just clone them, man. Uh, you just clone them. You defanned. You <laughs> well, you had the answer on this, right, Scotty? Uh, you know what? I just, I'm sorry. I just wanted to talk about when you get a bud on your leaf. That is a hormonal thing going on. That's not really supposed to happen. I guess theoretically, it could be something in the strain. But most of the time, you're putting putting too much of something on there. And when I used to load it up with recharge, I would just. You know, I had buckets of it, so I just put a tablespoon instead of a teaspoon. Sometimes I could see weirdness like that happen. And kelp products, too much of something that's kelp based, will definitely make it happen because kelp kelp works hormonally. And so, just check it out if you got something like that. Check your your nutrient regimen out. Make sure you're not giving it too many hormones. All right. All right. Yeah, I did fall into that uh, just out of quick ignorance. I was I had some uh, Remo's kelp. Is a kelp uh, product that's a good kelp sitting around. I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to throw some of this. I'm just going to do a tablespoon per gallon. Screw it. Which is like almost double the label rate. Um, and then I also, what I didn't put two and two together using recharge, which has, you know, some kelp in it as well. So I got kelp squared and I also ran into some leaf variegation too earlier in veg with, while doing that. So um, at least it's not a bad side effect, but it's kind of a little wasteful. You can probably get some weird growth traits that you might not prefer with too much of that going on. Yeah, it's hormonal, bro. Mm -hmm. What do you got? What do you got? What's the next comment here? Oh, <laughs> this is, I got this just for Grambo, man. 
says, fix your Dabby Hayes. Fix your title. It smelled lonely. And re- <laughs> was it? Phone. Are your plants lonely or something? My phone <laughs> did that. I trust ah, that my, ah, I'm ah. dyslexic. I can barely read. I tell anyone this is why I got in the visual industry. It's because I can't read. <laughs> and uh, I, my phone assured me that there was an E in lonely. Yeah, that's funny, man. But uh, you do a great job, Grandpa. Oh, anytime I can compliment you, I try to and uh, do an amazing job. And I wrote the title for this one. But that was a yeah, yeah, that, <laughs> that was no good. I thought it was a pretty thumbnail other than that. Uh, cool, cool. Um, and then I, these are you had some great comments because of it. Like there was a whole thread going under that. And Kelly Kellerstein says, um, it's okay. Many institutions let children spell the way it sounds or the way they feel it spells without correction. Avoid confrontation, which prevents any negative interpretations leading to anyone being offended. Hmm. Oh, my God. Yeah. Sounds good too. Uh, Shakespeare spelled words, however. (laughs) User G. (laughs) That's awesome. So uh, that... We're having that fun. That reminds me <laughs> of part of the many institutions let children spell the way it sounds in this modern world. I just went to parent teacher conferences here in British Columbia, Canada, and the teacher was explaining to me how my daughter doesn't turn things in on time, but there is no due dates. Um, <laughs> yeah. Like, that's... So it can't be late. She's no, like, no, it's, it's a, pol- it's a pol- I don't know if it's a provincial policy. Who makes the policy? But the idea behind it, Scotty, is that. Just because it's turned in late doesn't mean it's not good work. So they accept it. it nothing is penalized. And the students know this. If you turn it in late, turn it in when you want. Who cares? So oh, nice guy, Kenny. Man. Nice guy, Kenny has a, a kid and he's, you know, that age, you know, I think in the eighth grade. And he said that to me before. He's like, dude, I, I don't understand it. And then a couple of weeks later, he goes, I found out my kid's not turning any of his stuff in. So. I'm working with him now and he's really, I got through to him. He understands that he needs to do it. They're working together and they learned it. He turned it all in and they did learn it without him failing. So I don't know as much as I, uh, I don't like I agree. the side I agree. anybody. <laughs> There's two sides to it. You know, it's a tough, it's a tough time. I'm sure you went through a grade or a period in your life when it was like a weird zone, like for my daughter, she knows. Um, and we asked the teacher, actually my mother-in-law, is it hard for you to get these students to do stuff in eighth grade when they know eighth grade doesn't matter? And she's like, yes, because like, (laughs) what do you mean? Eighth grade doesn't matter. Very pivotal year. Yeah. It's the last year of school for a lot of people. Just as far as their, their ninth through 12th is when, um, official like record keeping for, I don't know, college or this, that for me, I was like, dude, I can get away with, even if I don't get away with a lot of stuff, my record goes away. This is after 18 and after. So yeah. I'm not 18 yet, so I can do some crazy stuff still. Thank you. 17 was pretty nutty for me, man. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> oh shoot, man. Shoot. What else, dude? What else? What else? What do we got here? Got uh this some, man. you have some news. Uh let's hit it. I could tell people, well, I'll throw a shout out in here. I know Grambo's got it on the fly. Don't forget about our merch, guys. Dudegrows.com forward slash shop i believe kind of badass grow journal with og j maestro artwork we got yeah. rolling trays rocking dgc hats there you go so we have some hoodies left up in there uh go to dogrows.com forward slash merch don't forget the uh or forward slash shop the lighter bundle that comes with a one hitter we just can't show it on the the the, the merch site uh so kick that uh, actually a dgc logo one hitter so go over there guys get yourself some gifts if it's your birthday or you just want some good gear hook it up hats nice yes. all right in the news you got the news is indoor farming entering a new era growing without leds hmm? what do i have yeah. a bad feeling this is from vertical no vertical farm daily and it is way weirder than that man they can remove the light from commercial uh growing uh with crispr <laughs> they remove uh let me see if i can find it man uh, the Square Roots is working with gene editing CRISPR plants that grow heterophilically. Uh, more specifically, they can add biomass by uptaking carbon from acetate. So they don't need photosynthesis. They can uptake carbon because they have this new gene in them. Uh, they can take this. It's a vinegar-like substance added to the irrigation water. So they can use that rather than relying on photosynthesis under LED lights. Effectively, these plants can grow in the dark on a vertical farm. 
That's insane. That's a little weird. Yeah, nothing wrong will come of that. <laughs> uh, yeah, they're saying that obviously uh, the results could change the underlying economics. We're reforming globally, of course, where lighting is almost our most expensive lighting. You got to pay for the lighting, and then in turn, you got to pay to cool the lighting. Um, I don't know. Sup so, uh, it's supported by a grant from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. No, oh which uh, they're not, they're trying to keep people from starving. I get it, but had they not seen Little Shop of Horrors, you know, there's been movies about mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Got it. Yeah, <laughs> seen that in the theater, and I just didn't know what to make of it. Walking nice. out, man. Nice. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, I want to keep my light. I like my light. It's part of the game, man. It's kind of creepy. She looks happy. Yeah, it it doesn't have to be part of the game, is what they're saying. But what happens when you know? Things can grow without light. Genetically altered things can grow without light. Plants can, and then they escape outside and they start, whether it's out competing or whatever. I can see it really being a nightmare in the ecosystem. And so mowing the insane. lawn all the time. Mowing the lawn just never stops growing. You know that they can put a, a glowing gene, uh, like a, you know, what an iridescent gene in uh, lawns and they can. Uh, make it so it glows at dark in the dark at night. It's kind of cool. I like it. I like it. What else you find here? I like this picture. <laughs> I put this one on, didn't I? I forgot. <laughs> Look at Barry. It's Jim. It's Jim McMahon, who was one of my favorite football players ever from the '80s. Just a badass gunslinger, as they would say. And there's Barry Sanders, who is about the shyest, most quiet, quiet Barry soft spoken. Sanders. I believe so. Oh, age and is cruel. Does he not just look like Jim's about to embarrass him again? <laughs> is that not the look? And maybe I'm wrong. No, is that not Barry? Is Sanders? this the Super Bowl shuffle era? It can't be Barry Sanders then, man. Better not be. I don't know. Anyway, uh, former NFL stars hint at presidential bid with weed platform. And uh, yeah, right. Jim McMahon wants to go and, you know, he's never going to do it. But at least it's uh, somebody out there uh, in a different area. I mean, this guy's probably getting coverage on ESPN and all that. And so he's getting uh, cannabis out there. It's kind of cool. I always like this guy. He is crazy. <laughs> Nice. This is interesting. Sorry, I was just reading up on this. I'd, I'm just going to vote on like the pitcher. I'd, I'd vote for him. You're right. Like, this guy looks, he looked, he, he, like, I'm looking at this pitcher and like, Andy's for full legal weed down. And he wouldn't be at this point. Like, we've been saying it's over 88% or some shiz polling as far as people that say, what are we doing? Um, I'm sorry. I missed the other part of this, man. It's two time Super Bowl champion Jim McMahon and all pro offensive line. Lineman Kyle Turley are go. hinting at a run for the White House with a campaign built on passing a banking bill for legal marijuana businesses and creating awareness for the benefits of cannabis. According Heck to yeah. Fox News, man, or Fox Sports even, you know. Whoa. Pretty, pretty interesting, man. Kyle Turley, who's the one? Yeah, he was the one yesterday, right? He's, he's insane. That dude's insane too, man. Oh, Isn't that the it. one that's oh, like, will Taylor Swift be first lady if that's the case? I don't know. He's a, he looks like a handsome fellow. I must be thinking of the wrong guy. Mm. I will say the more I read, uh, the, more, <laughs> the less impressed I am with their <laughs> platform. But uh, yeah, if they're getting cannabis awareness out, all right, man, all right. But I will say I don't think, I I don't think Jim McMahon's getting my vote. <laughs> I will have a final thought. It's hard to be impressed these days, Scotty. All right, let's take it to uh, Is what, it? what we got here. Oh, uh, no, Grambo, just... I'll, I'll be honest with you, and I know I'm kissing butt here. Grambo came in and he impressed me, man. I'm impressed with Grambo every day. And <laughs> comes in, he's got something new. He's always getting this better. A great time to launch my presidential yeah, campaign. Was... Ah, but for real, yeah. I'm impressed with people. When I turn the TV on, I'm not so impressed. When I scroll, I was making a, a statement regarding um, like the the campaign and the the, the, the oh, political yeah. politically. Uh, I'm not very impressed by anything that I see now. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Uh, we shot on a few more producers here before we got some Megas laugh moments. That's why you watch the video show, guys. If you're listening in, it's good times, good times. Comment, like, subscribe. I'm gonna shout out a couple more producers. The Growing Goat. What's up, yeah. the Growing Goat? I like that. That flows well. And Kendall, the Green. <laughs> nice. 
I'm a grow me some prohibition bud, bro. Nice. Prohibition. Ah, I'm sick of all your prohibition out there. (laughs) Check Uh, out yourgrows.com. Awesome. Forward slash support, guys. Go on over there. We've helped you grow. We've helped you harvest. We put a smile on your face. We made you chuckle. Laughter is priceless until you go to newgrows.com forward slash support and pay $10 for it. So. <laughs> Who would have thought you could put a price on it? Huh, All right. What'd you find in your uh, your, your algorithm? We got to come up with a name for this other than make us laugh because it is good. But Scotty's weird algorithm. Ah, uh, deep thoughts. Yeah, I got some good stuff, Grambo. I got some good stuff for Saturday, man. <laughs> oh, come on. Every end is a new beginning. You want to get a little philosophical? Mm. That really helped like that. <laughs> so that was some seedy I, weed. I guess so. <laughs> back to seed. I man. told you it's their season, that thing. Wow, that is a seed growing out it's of a nice joint. Little seed yeah. for plants. <laughs> yeah. I see, that completely possible. Totally. I like it. That's great. Yeah, it's beautiful. Hey, this uh, Thunder the Budbarian is a fellow Floridian. And so uh, Square Grouper says if you didn't grow up in South Florida, this is a Square Grouper. Mm-hmm. And there were kilos floating around. Mm hmm. You know, they look like that. <laughs> That's a real picture, man. Look at the nice. kid in the back, man. He's Mr. So cool. <laughs> oh, oh, shit. I, I dig it. Head. Get some more memes up, DGC, on dudegrows.com. And y'all throw some memes up there. I love it. Yes. Let me see what you guys got going on, especially if yes. you make fun of Scotty. Ah, I love this one. It's just Homer Simpson. It says, smoke weed on the way to smoke weed with other people. <laughs> Funny and true. <laughs> you know? Uh, oh, I love that. And then as we're just going with weed memes, will you? This one spoke to me. Mm. Stop stop trying to make everyone happy. You're not weed. <laughs> right? Mm, that speaks to me. Right? Yeah. Oh, I love it. When you think about it, some of the only times that uh, I hate it when it's prohibition or somebody got in possession or somebody had a, a positive drug test when they weren't supposed to. And that's the reason why. They have a disassociation with cannabis, not because of, you know, something that's actually a problem with the the plant. It's the rules. Mm, It's true. It's true. Just like when you're on prohibition for something completely unrelated to cannabis, I think at times they can even say that you can't, if you pop on a a drug test for cannabis, even though it wasn't related to any reason why you're on, is like, can be a problem. Get your medical. I heard that's a good loophole there. Make sure you're going to get on probation. Get your medical. They they can, you can get that accepted. Yeah, it gives your lawyer a leg to stand on too yes. when you get caught with yeah, a thousand plants. <laughs> it's medical. Uh, uh, ready to blow your mind, dude? This one blew my mind. There at 420, oh. 2024 will be the same date forwards and backwards. Palindrome. What could be happening? Yeah, right, man. It's cool. The novelty is increasing. So I'll speeding up here towards the end. <laughs> Took me a minute to do it backwards properly, but I got it. My mind is so deep, dude. Wow. Never again. Yeah. yeah. So think about that till next episode, till Saturday. Till the next episode. Yeah. yeah I'm gonna have to be there. <laughs> Hope everybody had a good time. If you're a producer, stay tuned, man. We do a little after show hangout. I'm going to show you what's going on in my grow. I got some, mm, uh, mm, let's see. Mm. So, uh, yeah, stay tuned for the after show, guys. Uh, you can catch that. Just log into Patreon. You'll see it posted up there uh, right when you're done here. And us say peace out, stay higher. Thanks, Grambo, Scotty, and uh, take her easy. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Thanks. All right. Take her easy, dude. You take her easy. Yes.